Hi, I'm Willie and welcome back to my channel. Before we get back to the VPN configurations and the 802.1x configuration videos, something was brought to my attention this weekend, so I wanted to do a quick video on it. And what we've got is we've got my Edge router, and we're going to run a wizard on it. And the wizard is we're going to run the load balancing wizard. And I want to show you something that, and it didn't really become an issue until this guy was running uh, DNS filtering where you pay you know X amount of dollars for a certain amount of requests but it's also something that you should know and it's it's on the ubiquity site they tell you this but uh, I'm gonna show you what it does and I'm gonna show you how to change it so here we are we're in our edge router X and we're gonna pretend we just took this out of the box and we're gonna hop over here and we are gonna go to the load balancing and you could set statics or or whatever here but I'm gonna use um, ETH 0 and ETH 4 and then we'll do this this will be fine and we'll use the default username and password do not do this in production and what we're doing is we're creating a load balance and the first internet's going to be on eth0 the second is going to be on eth4 okay and then um, 1 2 and 3 are going to be in switch 0 and we're going to get a DHCP address so we're going to apply this this is telling us what it's going to do so we'll go ahead and hit apply changes and we'll tell it to reboot so we'll be right back after the reboot and it's still rebooting, but the load balance, you know, allows you to have that wizard allows you to have, you know, multiple WAN connections and you can load balance or you can use failover, things like that. Out of the box, we're just using the load balancing wizard. Okay, so we're rebooted, so we're going to have to go to 192.168.1.1. Log in with UBNT, UBNT. Now, internet is going to work because I do have at least one uh, WAN link. But what I want to talk about, so if we pull up the dual WAN load balance feature on the Ubiquity website under their help, you can see that right here, it tells you that there's a watchdog thread for each WAN interface that pings www.ubnt.com every 10 seconds. If there are three consecutive failures, all traffic will fail over to the other WAN interface. Of course, if you don't like those defaults, they can be configured. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. And... So if we do a show load balance watchdog, it shows us that it is pinging ping.ubnt.com. Now, here's the here's the problem with that. If you're doing DNS filtering and you're using like dnsfilter.com for five dollars a month, you get a million lookups. Well, every ten seconds, you know this is it's going out and it's it's pinging that. So his deal was he had, within a day, and he had multiple WAN interfaces, like three WAN interfaces, but he had like 8,000 pings in a day or something like that. So he saw 8,000 name, you know, resolutions. Um, well, within this testing period, I don't know if it was a whole day or what it was, but he reached out and we, we started looking around and this is what we came up with. So you can actually change this. So you can change the, the watchdog. And if we look at this, what we can do, we can go into configure and we can do set load balance group G uh, interface ETH zero. Let's see, be a uh, route test 
Route test type ping target. And then we can do 8.8.8.8. .8 there are too many eights in there. Nope, that looks good. And so then we could do the same thing for ETH4. So now, if we do that watchdog, now you can see it says 8.8.8. Uh, .8 .8. And I was digging around in the config tree. Um, that's what I was doing a minute ago. So it's it's the same thing, but we go to load balance, group, G, interface, ETH0, route test, type, ping, and then there's that 8.8.8. .8. If you don't fill that in, it, it goes to ping.ubnt.com by default. So as you can see, I mean, and he travels around and he does, you know, if there's a famous band that's playing, they, uh, they call this guy and they're like, hey, the band needs internet or Wi-Fi or he does huge festivals and stuff like that. So you can see why he was a little concerned when he starts, you know, his cost starts going up when he's doing, um, you know, thousands of requests. And that's when the equipment's just sitting there with nothing behind it. At first I thought maybe he had a cloud key or an access point or something like that that was calling home, but he didn't. So it was just a router. So that's when we dug into it. So just a little food for thought, uh, you know, play around with this. You can set that so it doesn't have to do DNS lookups. There's some other tricks that you could do, but come back later this week for some more VPN and 802.1x configuration videos. If you've got any questions, put them below. As always, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe, please comment and share, and we'll see you in the next